Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Flexi webinar. My name is Bennett. I'll be the moderator for today. Our presenter is Aaron Clapp. He's our application specialist at SAI. He knows everything there is to know about Flexi, and today he'll be walking us through a new and exciting feature in Flexi 21, Jig Templates, which allows you to design and save templates that will match jigs on the printer bed. After the presentation, we'll be able to answer any questions you have either about this feature or any other Flexi topics, so feel free to put those questions in the chat, and we'll answer as many as we can. We are recording the webinar as always, so if you want to review anything that Aaron discusses or share it with someone else, we'll be sending you all the links this afternoon, so be on the lookout for that. And with that, I think we're ready to get started, so I'll go ahead and turn the presentation over to Aaron. All right, so this is uh, one of the new uh, features in Flexi 21 is uh, jig templates. Um, and like ben Bennett mentioned, this is uh, really helpful for uh, creating templates on flatbed printers. So uh, the example that you might use here might be uh, doing some play, so printing something on say uh, playing cards or uh, maybe like phone cases or something like that where you have a jig set up uh, and something set on the printer that you need to print on uh, in those particular areas. <clears throat> so setting up these jigs is really easy in, in Flexi, and we're gonna start in the production manager. So the first thing we'll do is we got production manager open here, and let's just take a look at some of the settings. And uh, so we'll just import a job real quick here. I'm just gonna pick one of these. And we'll open it up and let's just take a look at the, the jig layout settings. So while it's loading here, you'll see that down here at the bottom, this is where your jig layout is going to be under your layout tab. So where all your media sizing and stuff is. By default, the jig layout is unchecked. Uh, and then we have the define jig layout tab. This is where all the information is going to be uh, for setting up our jig. So if you click on this, this is gonna be the main window that you're gonna see for setting up your jigs. So up at the top here, you're gonna have your uh, material size. So this is in width uh, and height here. So we can change this as we need to in different sizes and it'll automatically adjust uh, the jigs based on our current parameters and the settings that we set. I'm going to go back to 10 by 10 here just so it's easier to see. We have a margin setting here. This margin or these margins are from the top, left, right, and bottom of the materials. So those four locations. And you can see as I increase these, it gives us a little bit of a, a margin from, from all sides. So we can assign a margin from the edge of the material this way if we want to. And while we're on the topic of margins, we can also do that inside of the template area. So you see here the dotted red line, that's actually where the area where it's gonna print in. And we can see that by the jig size here. So if I go 2.5, it automatically adjusts the, the, the width of the jig area. And if I want to modify where that is gonna print, inside of these black boxes, uh, the red area is what changes here. So I can adjust these up and down however I want to, to kind of center whatever it is I'm trying to print inside this jig. Um, let's go back to two inches here. So I've got uh, 16 here, and this is gonna how they're gonna print. Uh, the nice thing is here is I can also print this jig layout. So if I want to have a visual representation of how this is going to print and where the parts are going to print, I can actually print this out and it'll print right out on my printer. So in this case, I have this Muto set up. Um, I would want to set this up on a flatbed, really. This is a, a roll printer. Uh, but uh, either way, I can print this out and I can see what it looks like so that I can take my parts and kind of line them up and just kind of see how it's going to print in relationship to everything else if that's something that I need. 
Down here, we also have options for fitting jobs to the jig and whether we want to fit it proportionally or not. Uh, obviously, if we uncheck this option, it will stretch any image uh, so that it makes sure and fills out the entire area. This might be uh, something that you may want to do depending on, on what you're trying to achieve. So if your image may be a little bit smaller, say you're doing like the edge of a phone case uh, or something like that, and you want it just to fill in the entire area, then you, you might want to turn this on. Uh, if it's not really that important and you'd rather keep the proportions rather than uh, fill in the entire media, you would fit proportionally and it'll scale it proportionally as long as it can. So for example, in this image here, obviously it's a little bit wider than it is taller. And so it'll stretch it to the edge until the width lands inside the red and then the rest of it will just, it'll stop there. So uh, some different things that you can do uh, these uh, as well. Now, if I uncheck the fit jobs to jigs, uh, this will uh, essentially kind of allow you to, uh, I believe, pre or or fill in over, uh, allow the image to go beyond uh, the the edge. So if you want to do like a bleed or a wrap around or some, something like that, you can uncheck that and it'll unfit it from the jig. So if you wanted to have it go overlap or something like that. So for now, we'll set that to this. Now our spacing, this is fairly obvious here. We can set our spacing and how far apart we want these to be. This might be important in terms of uh, what, how you have your jig set up and what you're printing on. Uh, you may have whatever spacing that you have here and however that jig is actually set up in terms of how you want those to be. So we've got height and width here as well. Now we also have settings for origin. So this will be something that you can define. So for example, uh, by default, it just centers it inside of the media that we have here. So we have our piece of material, whatever this is, whether it's plastic or, or vinyl or, or whatever this is, we actually have it centered. So if I set our origin, now I can define where I want my origin or where I want the printing to happen from. So if I have a jig that's set up that in this bottom left hand or right hand corner to go from here and out, I can do that. Or I can just scooch this over if I want to and move my origin somewhere else. Uh, well, that's my spacing, sorry. Uh, origin, I can move my origin to the other side or the top right hand corner, whichever one I need to uh, based on how your setup is, where it's positioned and where you wanna start all of your graphics from. So that's a really important one for these jig layouts uh, to match whatever you have and whatever you're kind of working with. The other origin or alignment that we can do is here. So we can align these objects from the middle, top, or right. So basically what this does, it'll align the image to the corner of the template based on how we want that to happen. So again, this is kind of all depends on how you've designed it and how you want things to work out and how you want that image to be spread across whatever it is that you're printing. You may want it to start the image in the corner and have it expand from there. Or if you want to center it, you could just have it always centered. The default is center uh, for the most part. Uh, but you can, again, you can put it in any position that you want based on your application and what you're doing. These are your simple, simple settings here. Uh, really easy to set up. The great thing is you can also set up jig templates and presets if you want to and save them here. I've already actually saved one here, but it's really easy to set up. So let's just say we have a 64 inch piece of, or let's go, uh, let's go with a 32 inch piece of material. And then let's just say it's, um, 18 inches long. Let's say that our template is going to be uh, maybe eight inches by four. So we're doing something like this, or let's do, let's actually do the other way. Eight, eight inches tall, four inches wide. There we go. So maybe we're doing like some phone cases or something like that. Right. And 
Uh, let's set our spacing and let's perhaps do our spacing at maybe an inch each or something like that. And then let's do 0.75 tall. So we've got a nice little template here. I can set my origin if I want to. I think I'm fine here in this case. I can just go up here, hit save as, and then I can just save this as, we'll just do uh, you know, phone template. Okay. And now I've got that in my list. Now, if we click on this one, this is one that I could have created earlier. This is for a 15 by, uh, like a five by five inch uh, sticker or decal. Uh, so we can pull these up. So let's go ahead and just take a look at what something like this looks like uh, for some graphics. So first thing we can do is we can take one image and duplicate it over a whole range of uh, items. So I'm going to say apply jig to layout or apply jig layout. And then I'm going to notice when you apply the jig layout, your media size disappears or it goes grayed out. So that means that it's using the media size that you've defined inside of your jig. So that's just important to know that that's what's happening there. Uh, so I'm going to say, let's just do uh, 15 copies. So this one has 15. We'll set in 15. I've set it to automatically stretch it until it gets to a certain point. If I come back in here and I say don't fit proportionally, see how it stretches it up into the top form. So if this is something that I want, great. If not, then I can kind of see how that how that works. All right. Um, so I've got 15 here. If I go beyond our 15, and let's just say I want double, let's do 30. And that's where it's going to create a second page. I'm going to zoom out. And what it's done here is it's created two pages for me, two pages of 15 decals each. And I can go further if I want. And you can see the green line where it defines the page setting. So if I want to, and I, it, depending on the kind of material that I'm printing on, if I'm printing a vinyl and I have a huge sheet of it, I may not need to pause between pages. But if I need to or want to, uh, if I'm putting, let's say, a piece of uh, plastic or, or whatever it is that I'm printing on, I can hit pause between pages. And this will allow me time to remove the previous print, load in my new material, and then have it set and print again. So that's going to be really, really helpful here. So if I want to pause between pages, I can do that really easily. So now let's take a look at some other, you know, options here. So let's go and let's set this back to one and let's hit cancel and let's just delete this job. We actually have a couple different things I want to kind of show you. So I'm going to bring in a bunch of jobs. Um, and while this is processing, we'll take a, a look at the second one. All right. So I'm going to grab all these jobs here. They're all different size. They're all different graphics and whatnot that I have here. Um, so it's just kind of a crazy mixture of things. But I'm going to grab all these jobs. And one of the things that I'm going to do is to save me time, uh, say these are all graphics that you're going to be printing on, you know, whatever it is, you know, back of a phone case or, or different things. I've got my jig set up the way that I want it to. I've got my file set up the way that I wanted them to print, be printed. All I need to do is add them. What I can do is I can say, uh, go ahead and apply my jig layout template. And the way that I did this was I created a template inside of Flexi. So what, here's what I did. Let's go to default job properties. So if I go to my Muto and I go to default job properties, what I did was I created a template. Now this is not just a template in here because remember how we had these templates? These are for the jig only. So what I did was I went ahead and set up my jig template or, or I, I set up my printer the way that I wanted it. So I picked my ICC profile if I want to. So I've got my profile in here and I could set um, I could set all my other settings in here. And additionally, I went ahead and said, apply jig layout and then define jig layout. So I'm going to say, 
define, and then this is where I'm gonna choose the one that I want, which is this one, hit okay, and then I hit save as. In this case, I chose a, a color correction setting here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just save it again, just so we have it, and now it's been saved. So that's how, and this is pretty common to Flexi, so if you're familiar with Flexi, you probably know how to create these presets. I went ahead and created this jig layout template with our template selected so that when we apply it, this makes this job really easy for me. So again, I'm gonna hit add job. I'm gonna grab all of these, and here's the important part. I want to go ahead and I, I do wanna nest the jobs because I want this to be printed all as one big job uh, not as individual jobs. If I if I uncheck this, it's going to import all the jobs and then apply my jig layout template preset to it as individual jobs. But we don't want that. I want this to print all in one big job. So I'm going to say nest jobs, select my jig layout template, and hit add. Now what this is going to do is it's going to start importing all these jobs one by one. And there's a ton of them in here. So we're gonna let this process for a second. And then while it's doing that, I was gonna show you just a quick preview of something else that we can do with this. So let's, while this is doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up our designer and we'll take a look at something else real quick. Okay, so this is a little bit of a sneak preview on something else that, that we haven't yet done on webinars yet, but we actually do have a Workflow Wednesday video on how to create um, variable data. So variable data is a new tool for Flexi 21 that allows you to plug in all kinds of different information into a job. So again, while that's loading, I'm just going to pull up my variable data, uh, data template box here. And what this has done is I've created these little variable data templates and I've connected this to a CSV sheet. And so when I click preview and I go to my design central, I can kind of look through all these and get the information and kind of see, you know, what's going on with each one of these. So I set this up and I can combine my variable data with the jig template as well. So we'll be taking a look at this here. So I just kind of wanted to show you this. This is what our next job is going to be is combining variable data with the jig template uh, to create a really uh, great effect. So let's minimize this and take a look and see where we're at. I think we're almost done loading. It's nesting all the jobs currently now that it's loaded them in. And once they're loaded in and nested, when we open up our default job properties, uh, we're gonna be able to just hit print right from there. We'll be able to preview our job and take a look at it and then see where uh, where that goes. There we go. All right, so we have a bunch of jobs in here. This is quite a few. Uh, so we've got 55. So I'm gonna just double click on my nested job up here. And now you can see that what it's done is it's automatically applied our template, jig template for me. And all of my images have been applied with the same stretching or the same uh, settings that I did for, for this one. Uh, looks like we've got something going on with these. And that could just be the image. I think these are uh, some images that are, uh, some of them have some white space on the end. So that's a little bit, that's the file problem, not the, the jig templates problem. So um, anyway, we've got all of our files here. We can double click on this and kind of zoom out and look at them. Um, so we've got a whole sheet of them. And if I want to change anything, I can, but my default settings have already been applied. So you can see that my 18 by 32 sticker pack has been applied. I can hit okay and I could just hit send and have these print. If I want to pause for media change, I can hit send and I'm ready to go. So that's if you wanted to apply uh, multiple images to the same jig. Now let's go back and take a look at what it's gonna be for if we want to apply, say, uh, our 
Let's go ahead and delete that job so it's not holding everything up here. So this is our variable data file here. So if we double click on this, and this is, by the way, this is pulling the information from, I'll show you, here's our little CSV sheet. So we've got our names and phone numbers and positions and all that kind of stuff is all set in here. Uh, so that's where it's pulling its data from. So uh, if you want to take a look at that uh, Workflow Wednesday video that we did uh, just last week, I would take a look at that and, and kind of, you'd be able to kind of put both of these things together. But you can kind of see here that if we zoom in, each one of these has a name. And of course, the names are a little bit mixed up here, but we've got a name and an information sheet. We've got email, their location. You can see they've got an email address, their phone number, or their extension, and a picture and whatnot that goes with these. So all I did there was I set up my variable data inside of Flexi, brought it into Production Manager. Actually, this is just an FS file. So if you look at this file, it's just a variable data.fs. I defined all of my variable data information inside this tab here, which again, you can check that video if you want to know how to do this. I can bring it in, I can apply that jig layout to this, and I can print these out just as if uh, this were a business card that was gonna go on some kind of a uh, sheet of material or something like that. So combining two powerful tools in Flexi, which is variable data and the jig template to create uh, kind of an, an even jig and I could print these out as much as I want. So as many data fields that I had, I could just fill up entire sheets of this uh, just like this. So this is the jig layout tool. This also works if you want to apply a, the contour cut. So if you want to apply a contour cut to any of these objects, that also works. So you can do that as well uh, to cut these objects out. Um, so very, very flexible tool, allows you to set up any kind of jig, jig you want. Again, you can set up presets. And if you're gonna be doing this on a kind of like a production type scale, uh, you can very easily use the presets in order to pull those in really easily so that you don't have to really do anything. You can just set the preset, bring them in, and it's pretty much all done for you. So a little bit there on the automation side to kind of help you get through things a little bit quicker. If this is something that you're doing frequently, this jig templates will really help with that as well. Um, we actually have a really good video uh, as well. I'm going to link it here in the chat. Just if you want to, we had uh, one of our employees uh, work on a flatbed printer and we printed out some, some cards using uh, so, uh, so like a deck of cards with the jig template set up. Uh, and we had that specific material. So let me just post that in the chat. So if you're interested in, in watching that video, uh, just to kind of show how they set that up, I would recommend taking a look at that. It's on our website. Um, you can take a look at it. But again, we're printing double-sided on in that case. So double-sided uh, deck of cards with our logo and a bunch of stuff into it. And we set the, set the jig templates up uh, there as well. So you can kind of see what he did and kind of see how that works as well. A really easy tool to work with, really. It's really simple, really easy to use, um, things like that. We're also going to be planning on making improvements and stuff on this as well as we build up Flexi 21 and and make different changes. We want to make sure and make this as, as easy to use as possible uh, and as powerful as, as we can. So hopefully that will uh, that'll help you out. So any questions on this tool or anything about Flexi at all? Thanks for that presentation, Aaron. Let's just see, uh, wait another minute here and see if we have any other questions come in. If you have any questions about this topic or any other Flexi topic, Aaron can get those answered for you. Yeah, so this is, uh, I the next uh, several webinars will eventually be talking about 
the uh, variable data tool. So if that's something you're interested, you wait for that. Or if you don't want to wait, uh, go to our Workflow Wednesday playlist on our YouTube channel, and we go over how to set up this particular file or this particular uh, business card inside of Flexi using the uh, using the jig or using the uh, the variable data tools, which is really really powerful, by the way, really awesome tool. So we think uh, if you're doing any kinds of this stuff, uh, this is going to be a really great tool for you to use. So check that out if you don't want to wait. But uh, we will have a webinar on it uh, eventually as well. So uh, this will be on our list of things to talk about. All right, well, it looks like we don't have any questions today, so we'll go ahead and close it out. Thank you all for joining us for this Flexi webinar. Make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter so you won't miss any webinars or announcements. Our next Flexi webinar will be about some improvements to the contour cutting workflow in Flexi 21. That'll be on July 6th, and we hope to see you there. Thank you again for attending. We hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.